All right, let's do some road visualizations. So first I'm gonna go over and grab the pen tool and I'm gonna click on the word fill and I'm gonna set that to none. Okay, and then I'm gonna come over and click on the word stroke and set that to solid color. Now over here, you can click on this color palette, change the color if you want. You can also set the stroke width over here. So I'm gonna set that to something like 25. You can always change it later. And now I'm gonna zoom out on the composition panel here and I'm gonna come down here and start to draw a path. So I'm gonna click and drag here. And as I click and drag, it gives me these Bezier handles. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to click and drag here so that we get this path. Here we go, we want it to curve out like this. So I'm gonna adjust these Bezier handles here. Okay, so now I have a very simple path here. There are two vertices with this tangent or line connecting them and a new shape layer has been created. So I'm gonna go grab the selection tool. Now the way these shape layers are set up is you have a content section. If you open this up, you have a shape group. I'm gonna expand this. Now inside of a shape group, you have the path as well as the stroke and fill attributes. And then at the bottom, you have the transformation attributes of the shape group. So every shape group has its own transformation elements. So be aware of this. This is where working with shapes can get really confusing really fast. Now I'm gonna go grab the fill and I'm gonna delete that because I know I don't want it anymore. Now the first technique I'm gonna do here is I'm going to create a look of a road using stroke groups or stroke attributes. So if you open up this stroke, you can see there's all these different parameters. There's ways that you can customize the look of this stroke. First, I'm gonna click on the shape group. I'm gonna hit enter to rename it and I'll just call this road, maybe road one. And then down here for stroke, I'll hit enter and I'll rename this asphalt. And now I can start to customize some of these parameters. So first I'll go grab color and we'll bring this down to a gray and I'll start to adjust the stroke width, bring that up to 150. All right, so now we have the little base of our road here. Now I wanna add some lines for the middle. So for that, I'm gonna to go to the asphalt stroke group and I'm gonna hold control and hit D to duplicate it. Hit enter again and I'll call this one lines. Now I need to place the lines on top of the asphalt so that I can see them because if it's underneath, they will be covered up by the asphalt stroke element or stroke group. Now to open this up, I'm gonna go to color and we're gonna change this to like a yellow color here. And now we'll bring this stroke width way back down to like 10. Okay, that's looking good. Now I wanna have a dash line. I don't want this continuous line. Maybe that's what some of you want, but I want a dash line. So down here you have a parameter for dashes. If you open it up, you'll notice that there's nothing there. You have to actually hit this plus button that says add a dash or a gap. So if you hit it once, it's gonna add a dash with an offset parameter. If you hit it twice, it adds a gap parameter as well. And if I zoom really close in here, you can see this is not what I want. So I'm gonna to start to tweak these parameters. We're gonna bring the dash way up. We'll bring it to something like 75. And now I'll start to expand the gap. We'll expand the gap to maybe 45. Actually, 65 is looking a little bit better. And there you go. Now we have a very, very basic road shape here. And the really cool thing about this particular setup or rig is that it's one individual shape layer that has one path with two stroke elements. And what's cool about that is I can go grab the G key and then just grab these and start to move them around. And you're gonna see both the actual road outline and the lines are gonna follow along. What's cool about this is I can keep drawing and the road will just expand now and I can just draw this road around to wherever I want it to go. So undo this. Now click on the actual layer here and I'll go ahead and rename this road one. One other cool thing you can do is I'm gonna close this shape group is you can add these animators. So let's say I want to expand this to be a two lane highway. I can just go to offset paths and that's gonna place this just beneath our road group and you can see something's going on here. We're getting two lines here. Well, if I expand the amount, you're gonna see that now we have two actual lanes here. So we'll do 115 maybe. So now we've got a little two lane highway. Once again, this is all just one path. So if I go back, hit the G key, you can see we can move our two lane highway wherever we want. And if I come back down here to lines, I can go over to dashes and you see this little offset parameter and now watch what happens if I start to move the offset. So as I expand this, you're gonna notice we start to get a little bit of movement here. So this is gonna allow us to do some animations. So what I could do is I could add an expression here and just type in the word time times 100. And what that is gonna do 
is that is going to just automatically have those moving along. So if you want to have some animation, if you're working with like a static map and your map's not moving, you want some kind of secondary movement, this is a quick way to achieve that. Now let's say we're actually making animations for the UK and I want it to go in the other direction. I can just hit times negative 100 and now they have switched directions. All right, real quick, I want to show you a more advanced technique that's going to open up more customization options. So duplicate this layer, control D. I'm going to turn the visibility of road one off. I'm actually going to lock it and just shy it all together so that we don't see it. Now what I want to do for this one is I want to add outer lines to the road here, just these outer white lines. So for that, I'm going to come back down here and I'm going to grab offset pass and just delete that altogether. And I'm going to grab the shape group and I'm going to hit control D to duplicate the entire group. What that's going to do is that's going to duplicate not only these stroke groups, but also the paths. So now we have two paths and I'm going to rename this group outer lines. And to be able to see what's going on, I'm going to turn the visibility of the first shape group, the road off. And now I'll come up to this one and we just want to create outer lines for this particular element. So I'm going to delete asphalt. And now for lines, I'll just customize this one. I'll go grab the color. We'll bring it back to white here. And then I'm going to go to dashes and hit minus twice so that I just have this straight line now. And now what I can do is with this shape group selected, I'm going to click on add and then I'm going to select offset paths. And it's important to understand how this works because when you start to add these animators, these are applied to everything above it. So if I were to place it at the bottom of these shape groups, it's going to be applied to all those shape groups. So if you want it to only affect this particular path, you need to group them. Because you can see here, it's right inside of this group right now. If I close it, that offset paths parameter is inside this group. So if I open this up and start to expand it, you can see now I'm getting these two lines here. So I'm going to turn road one back on the shape. Uh, actually, I should name this road two. It's the road shape group. Now we can see exactly where I want to put these lines. So I'm going to offset the amount to something like 65 and I'll go down to lines and we'll bring the stroke width down by about half to five. Okay, so now I have a bit more complex of a road here with these outer lines. The problem now is it's not as easy to adjust because we have two paths. So if I hit the G key and grab the layer, and start to grab these points, you'll notice that, again, these are two paths. So that can be pretty annoying. So one thing that I like to do is attach all my paths together. To do that, grab your shape layer, and then go and keyword search the word path, so it'll bring up all the paths of your particular shape layer element, and then you can simply connect these together. So I can grab the outer lines, the path here, and grab the property pick whip, and attach it to the road. And now if I come over here with the G key and grab this point, you'll notice now that everything is going to stick together. This is a really cool workflow if you have a lot of different path elements. And what could be really fun is to create some road animation presets. So I'm going to go to window and then open up effects and presets. And then over here, I'm going to go to the shape layer and just grab the contents, grab the panel menu for effects and presets and do save animation preset. And you want to save it under the user presets of your version of Adobe After Effects. I'm going to call it Road 1. And now if I come over here and create a new composition, so nothing in here, and now I just come over to Animation Presets, User Presets, I can now see Road 1. If I double click it, boom, now I've got this road. I can hit the G key and quickly move it around. And you know what would be really powerful if you want to go crazy with this is you can add expression controls and connect all your colors and all your parameters to those effect controls and then save that out as well with your animation presets. I mean, you can go crazy with this. In fact, I think I'm going to do that just because it's too much fun. And one other thing, if I just come back over here and re-add the offset paths, and now I'm going to try to create a double lane highway again, you'll notice that our outer lines are sticking to these edges. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off outer lines and I can use layer styles as well. So with this shape layer, I'm going to go to layer, layer styles, and then just add a stroke and that will add a stroke on the outsides. So now I can come and uh, edit the parameters of this stroke. So let's turn these to white and make sure they're set to the outside. And now if I go back, here we go. Now we got our double lane highway.
I'm going to make this project file as well as the road animation preset available over on my Patreon page. Just follow the link in the video description or the link on screen here to go check that out. Speaking of Patreon, big shout out to my tier 3 patrons, Tyson the Keymaster, Mike and Sandra over on YouTube at Flumi Plus One, Ryan, Josh, and Alex. Thank you all so much for making this video possible. This is a cool feature that you can also use with the GeoLayers plugin. And if you're a fan of my channel, you're probably a fan of GeoLayers 3. And if you want to check out my master class that I'm putting together, follow the link in the video description for that. That course is coming very soon, so if it's not already out now, join the waitlist.